here's something I, I want to talk about with you guys. Um, so here's the tweet. This just came out in the latest, um, latest, I don't know, 20 minutes ago as of recording. It says, Andrew Yang. And he says, for those wondering, I will be crowd surfing in sandals at Thursday's debate. Okay, so that's pretty funny, right? I, I think it's I think it's a I think it's a pretty funny, you know, thing to say for context at an event. An event that we were actually at, but miss I'm not gonna get into that. But Andrew Yang uh crowd surfed with his uh supporters. I thought that was a lot of fun. It's pretty cute, right? But this is what I want to talk about with you guys. And please let me know in chat what you guys think about this. This is what I want to talk about. <laughs> Dude, Chris, if all of a sudden it's, it's all quiet and then the, just the glass breaks. Psh, dun, 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 dun. Ah, that'd be hilarious. But no, I've heard people levy this criticism against Andrew Yang. And I'm really interested what you guys are going to say uh, in the chat about this and just in the comments, whatever. I've heard a lot of people say that it, it, it's starting to look like Andrew Yang isn't taking this serious enough. He's having a lot of fun. It's good to see. You want to have fun. But is this guy taking this serious? Now, as someone who follows Andrew Jang all the time, and I, I I watch a lot of his stuff, I read a lot of his stuff, I follow him a lot, I would say, well, yeah, I think he's taking it serious. But, and this is, oof, this is that word, man. It's going to get thrown around a lot. Have, have fun following a presidential campaign, man. Optics, right? Optics for stuff like this, supporters, it's great. I think it's hilarious. Optics for someone who's not, you know, 56-year-old woman or man living in, I don't know, Michigan who work all the time. And like and the crowd surfing guy, is he even? Oh, the robot guy. The robot guy who crowd surfs. That's the guy. Yeah, I don't know. I think I might vote Elizabeth Warren. Hey, do you think that is a real threat? I don't know. To be honest, I'm trying. It's really hard to remember this. As a young guy from Los Angeles who's really into all this media stuff, I think it's hilarious. But as an average voter across the country who might not be as interested in this stuff and they, they just see some guy crowd surfing, like that guy's running for president. That's weird. Why? Why not vote for a serious politician? Oh, and he has no political experience. Oh, the guy crowd surfing has no political experience? And he should be president? Huh, I don't know. Maybe I don't support him. Would that work against him? To be frank, I don't feel that way. Cause I, but again, though, it's tough. I follow him very closely all the time, and I know this isn't everything he does. I know he gets serious sometimes, but I, I, yeah, I think it's possible to have too much fun on the campaign trail and to start looking a little bit like you're not taking this serious enough. Even if we know, like I said, it, it riles up some people. People love it. At a certain point, you have to look like I'm taking this very seriously, and I know what that, I know what's at stake here. And, well, I say I think he is, but it's, tweets like this don't help if someone who doesn't know a whole lot about him sees this and goes, oh, that guy? Hey, he's the guy who hangs out with his gang, right? Was he a senator or something? Oh, he was never in office, ever. No one's ever voted for him before, huh? But now I should? Like, that's a real barrier, and uh, to win the prize, to be frank, guys, I'm actually wondering how much of that's holding him back today. Because I, the one thing I will say about Andrew Yang, he has not done a good enough job of explaining how his lack of political experience isn't going to be an issue. Because I'm wondering, the reason why I bring this up, guys, you know, I talk about Andrew Yang all the time. I like Andrew Yang. The reason why I bring this up is because you look at the polls, he's been at about 3%. There's something that's kind of holding him down a bit where he's not able to keep, he's generating momentum, but it's not turning into actual polling increase. Why is that? But why is it that he's got this very, very, very fervent fan base? Momentum's crazy. I mean, three or four days a week, I could pull up a, uh, I could pull up um, uh, a Twitter, twit. There's that word again. The trends on the United States and Twitter. I can pull them up on like a weekly basis and show you when Andrew Yang one's trending, all the time. Pull up articles about him, interviews with him. Million people, millions of people have seen him on Joe Rogan. They've seen him on Dave Rubin. They've seen him on Ben Shapiro. They've seen him on The Breakfast Club. And then I could show you that Cory Booker is still beating him in polls on average. Why is that? Why is that? I am starting to wonder, is it people feel like, is this guy taking this serious? Because they see tweets like, I'll be crowd surfing in sandals. Like, the crowd surfing guy? I'm voting for him for president? For what? Again, disagree with that personally, but I see it. So I'm just interested in what you guys' opinion are. I, 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 I see that could be the thing. Because I'm, I'm just trying to wrap my head around, what is it? What's the thing 
that's holding Andrew Yang back as far as making a big leap in the polls. Dude, Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris had one good debate. One good debate. That was it. And she doubled in the polls. Media likes her more. I'm not going to you know, pretend that's not true. She had one good debate, one viral moment against Joe Biden, and she doubled her support. Lost it all immediately, but it happened. Why can't Andrew Yang move at all? When I see personally on the street him getting more support. I mean, I was down there in Santa Monica with there was like a few, there was like, I think there was like 50, 20 of us, which isn't the biggest number, but we were just walking through the street like passionately saying, you know, Andrew Yang, Yang 2020, who wants to get thousand dollars a month? Did for a couple hours. People are meeting, we're highlighting. We were just, we, we just did a video. We actually just published a video a little while ago about how, uh, you know, friend of the show, Fred the Felon and Truckers for Yang, uh, did a GoFundMe, raised like nine grand in like a day, and they're going to wrap his truck and drive around the country. Obvious, cool stuff. No, yeah, Yang is, Harris is a sitting senator, exactly. He, but I, I think the Calabar is actually a really good way of phrasing it right there, man. I agree with that exactly. I think what we're seeing here is he needs to focus more on, I am a legitimate, serious candidate for president. Like, if you vote for me, I will get stuff done because I'll know how to do it. I, I will have the right people around me. I think, well, because he, I, I, I disagree on policy. I think he's got enough policies out there. People know his policies. I think he needs to balance tweets like this a little bit more with legitimizing what his accomplishments have been and why they could tr transition him to being a better president. Because I, I, I do, I, at a certain point, I'm wondering, like, why are he, why is he not moving at all in polls? Because I do see support grow. And I think it's because he's growing a certain type of support. But he needs, he needs, again, like I, was, like I was talking about earlier, you know what voters you need to win as a Democrat that voted for Trump? You need to win over the voters who still lie and won't admit they voted for Trump. Win over them and you can win the White House. That's who you got to win. The people that to this day won't admit they did, but they did. And, you have to find a way to reach those people. And a lot of those people, man, are probably... Here's the other thing, right? How many Americans vote? Like, one in three Americans vote? It's a very specific type of American you have to win over to win the White House. It's one, it's, it's one of the one in three that vote. And it's really, really, really tough because I like Andrew Yang. I think those are great ideas. I do think he takes it serious. And I'm no fan of... Here's the... Here's, here's again, though. Here's where my own personal bias comes in, guys. I'm no fan of politicians at all. The fact that he has no background, I love it. I'm like, awesome. Awesome. He has no political background. To be frank, I'm also someone who, generally speaking, doesn't vote because I don't like politicians. He didn't necessarily need my support as much. Now, thankfully, I do a lot of content and I actually do a lot of stuff to try to help spread the word, right? Hopefully, I can generate more than one vote from what I do. But still, I'm saying is people like me aren't necessarily who you need to win an election. You need to win the people that don't say a whole lot about it. They just, they were, they will not. Because it's funny. I know some people who are like, I vote on everything always because I'm an American and I have that right. Those are the people you need to win over, man. And I don't know if they like to see stuff like this. I do. I don't think it's funny. I don't know if they like to see stuff like this. And again, the reason why I say that is because even though Andrew Yang is definitely generating a lot of real support from real people, you still can't see his line because he's in the mass of everyone else. He's getting really close to breaching out of it. He's really close. You actually kind of just can't start seeing his line right here, which is that green one. Um, but he hasn't had that jump. Now, the media helped Warren and Harris until they got tired of Harris and stopped helping her. Um, but still, is that all media? I think that's what it is, guys. That's, so, that's, I don't know. Like I said, please let me know in chat what you guys think about that. That's what I think it is, though. I think they don't like seeing this. They don't like seeing your average home voter, like I said, kind of person who voted for, voted for Trump and won't even admit it. Those kind of people don't necessarily like to see crowd surfing sandals. Dude, you haven't even been a city councilman. Pitch me on that first, you know? It's tough. It's really difficult, but that's what I think. Uh, well, I, I, I think one of the other thing is, you know what's a very, very common thread I have speaking with Yang Gang people and members of the Andrew Yang you know, community, people who want to see Andrew Yang win the presidency? One common thread I see all the time of, oh, you know, I was... There is a large... Don't get me wrong. Very large base. Democrat voters. I've voted for Democrats. I've been following Democrats for a while. Yang is just a Democrat that I like this year. A lot of those people. There's a lot of people too who are like, uh, you know, in 16 I voted for so and so. Like I wasn't really that interested, or I haven't been. I've never been. How many people? I've never been motivated in politics now until Andrew Yang. I think he's cornered them. He just needs to find a way to shift what he's doing to target the stay-at-home, the person who doesn't talk about this stuff, the person who doesn't 
person who isn't reading about the news all the time, who isn't trying to be the most informed voter possible, but the person who's going to make their voice heard when it becomes time, they're going to make their vote. And they want to they want to make sure they can believe in the person they're voting for. I think he needs to win them over. And I think once he does, we'll start seeing... Because I've talked about before, until he's breaking through into double digits, there's that 10, 11, 12 points. Dude, so much work to be done. There's no no time to celebrate for anyone who's following the Yang campaign until he's at 12, 13, 14% challenging Bernie, trying to pass Bernie and get up to Warren. Until then, holy cow, man, it's tough. Exactly, they vote based on how they feel. And if they feel like this guy is just some some rich dude who's like, which the funny thing is, as far as people running for president, he's not that rich. He's like, he's like a Bernie. He's like literally a millionaire. He's got like a couple million, you know, like he's not like, you know, he's not John Delaney up there, 200 mil, right? But um, they look at him as just some, uh, there's actually a tweet. Holy, holy cow, man. If I can find this tweet for you guys, I really want to show you this tweet. I think it's a really, this is kind of really, um, here we go. This is a tweet from June 12th. From a man named Walter Shapiro. Uh, I guess he covers presidential campaigns for New Republic, Roll Call, and Guardian. Uh, fellow at the Brennan Center and a teacher at Yale. So, you want to talk about kind of like old school political elitist types? He's one of them. He had a tweet from June 12th of this year that recently got brought back up. Why did it get brought back up? June 12th? That was like months ago. Well, wow. it's because he says... Uh, Somebody, uh, so here we go. I'll be a little more fair with it. He says that, uh, for fairness for the debate rules, the DNC, um, has should add to their debate criteria in case of minuscule differences in poll numbers. Preferences would go to sitting or recent governors, members of Congress. Past service to the party would also be a factor. These are the kind of voters Andrew Yang, oh, thank you, Connect Pause, is gonna have issue with. Someone said, uh, how does that idea promote fairness? And he says, by eliminating true vanity candidates like Marianne Williamson and John Yang. That was the reason why this tweet resurfaced, because it was John Yang. But that's what I wanted to, this one, I want to highlight this to you guys, because it's important. People who want Andrew Yang in the White House, please listen to this. These voters exist. And these voters aren't just some snooty, oh, I blog for... No, this guy teaches at Yale. He's a fellow at the Brennan Center. I think it's like a big media thing. This, this, this guy isn't just like some snooty jerk. But there are people who have that perception. And Yang's got a perception or he's going to keep polling at less than 5%. That's what I'm starting to feel. Because I'm looking around. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what are we seeing here. I think this line of thinking. Again, one of those previous tweet. Look at this guy. Look at this closely. What is he saying here? The DNC should wait not only... Not only weight people that are sitting or recent governors and members of Congress, but they should weight it heavier for past service to the party. And I think they do. And realistically, real oh no, that wasn't a joke. This tweet's from June twelfth. Like I think he just actually got his name wrong. Um, realistically, though, that's kind of what the DNC does, right? And realistically. Can we fault them for weighing past service to the party as like a bonus for candidates for the party? So I think because I know I, I can't be the only person who's been following Andrew Yang and saying, OK, I'm seeing a lot of support. He's generating people like him. This looks good. OK. And there's no movement in the polls at all. It's like, why? Some of the polls are being screwed with him. No doubt. He's left off some. No doubt. Uh, media is not super fair to him. I'm not going to lie and say they are. But at the same time, these kind of people exist. This guy was talking about, about John Yang. Yeah, he's talking about he's talking about Yang June 12th, man. This is before the June debates. Not that many people knew about him. This guy does. He follows this stuff. He's a vanity candidate. The DNC should be focusing on candidates that are sitting or recent governors and congressional members that also have past service to the party. That's what he's saying. And that is a large. That and this is the, this is a group of people you gotta win. Remember when I showed you guys the uh, the 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 polling results? That poll that came out and it showed that the one poll. But dude, I see this in all the polls. The people that followed this election closely are mostly Democrats that make over six, over a hundred thousand dollars a year. They're following the election the most closely. Yeah, elitist types. Uh, it's elite's the wrong word, but you know what I mean. Like upper upper society types who listen to people like Walter Shapiro, who's a teacher at Yale who says that these vanity candidates like Marianne Williamson and John Yang need to get out because they have no passive service to the party and they've never held office. Yang needs to win them. Focus on winning Trump voters later. Win these people first. And if you can't, whew, 
good luck winning a primary, man. And you can't win over the people that are the the Democrat stalwarts, the people that make six figures, the people that write for write for write for you know like a, establishment papers, people who write for the Times. Good luck having them look at you as a vanity candidate. And then ugh, I don't know. I, I don't want to sound like I'm being really harsh, but what I'm saying is when you have people that feel that way, and then you come out and say, "No, elitist," like I said, elitist was the wrong word, but I just mean uh, people that have a, a more of a focus on politics because you know they have a. They have one people that make over a hundred thousand dollars a year generally have some interest in the market or their own company, stuff like that. So they're just more like they are way more interested in what's going on. One, two is just that they have more time and energy to focus on it. You know, generally speaking, people who are making well under fifty thousand dollars are scraping and scraping, they're not really focusing on the, the, the election, they don't have time. But you know, so again, I just wanted to bring this up, guys. Sometimes, sometimes. When I, I feel like what we're seeing is we have a I'm not smoothie and smart enough to cover the PSP for me. <laughs> well, thank you. Like I said, I don't want to make it seem like a oh, vote Democrat is not following. Shut up, man. Yeah, like you win an election by winning over established adults that have a real, real, real. I don't like the term skin in the game. Oh, productive empathy. Thank you, man, for not following. But people that just kind of look at things and they're kind of like. Like I said, they have money in the market. They own businesses. They work for companies with stock options, and they really want to make sure their company is going to be here five years from now so they can keep working there. Those are the people who vote. They're established. Because here's the thing, and I don't want to... It's when people say... When people talk about lowering the voting age to 16, I'm like, dude, the arrogance of youth, man. Like, uh, 16? No problem with it. I, I don't think it'll swing elections, but... Dude, like, there are people, because this is the funny thing, I know people that are my age that look at people in their 50s and go, those guys are idiots, why are they allowed to vote? It's like, dude, maybe they're idiots, but they've seen 10 elections, you know, they know how this stuff works. Uh, and that's, oh, that's an interesting take from Vote Democrat. He said the next president of the United States will be Joe Biden or Donald Trump. If those are the choices, it's Donald Trump, man. I don't think Joe Biden can beat Donald Trump. Donald Trump has so many advantages, and Joe Biden's got not enough. Uh, so anyway, yeah. So I just I'll get to that one second. I just wanted to cover one last thing. Uh, uh, that is what I think about stuff like this. And Andrew Yang. I think if Andrew Yang wants to move up in the polls, he's got to worry about voters like like this, people like this, and he has to come across as a serious candidate who's actually focused on overcoming the fact that he does not have political experience and not somebody who's having too much fun in the campaign trail. So just, just be careful. Don't have too much fun. Is my my my. I don't want to say my advice, but that's what I'm seeing is happening. I'm seeing that there's other people, like I'm just relaying what I hear from people. Some people feel like it looks like he's having too much fun and these more serious type people who take themselves more seriously than Andrew Yang takes himself perhaps don't like seeing it. So that's all I'm going to say on that, guys. It's, I don't know. It's, it's, someone, he just tweeted this out and it just kind of reminded me of this tweet and the way he's been and, and why I don't think that he's moving enough in the polls. I think he just has to show a little bit more of a serious side. Not, not all of it, a little more. A little more, like a little Sometimes he comes out and he has a lot of fun. He's very, very confident. We saw him at the the Asian American and Pacific Islander event uh, just the other day, and he comes out and he's very confident, very fun. Yo, Yang Gang, but he looks a little bit too much like a rock star for some voters. I could see it as a criticism, and I hear it as a criticism from them as well. I don't agree, but I see it. I see it, and I hear it. So I think it's it's just worth noting. It's worth paying attention. You know what I mean? 